Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about obstetrics, maternal newborn, maternal child, your OB class. So why is it hard? What do we learn? And what can we do about it? So if you're new to the channel, you don't know that this is actually my area of expertise. This is my specialty. You know, OB is kind of my jam. It's my thing. So it's very important and special to me. So I would hope that it becomes somewhat important and special to you as the student. So the first thing I want to talk about is why do students find this class in particular so hard? The first is there's a lot of new terminology. So many new terms you've never heard before. And if you don't understand the terms, you're going to have a very hard time understanding the concepts. Basically, I'm teaching you a brand new language. That's the way I approach this. I approach this that I'm teaching you a new language. Can't relate. So a lot of your other classes, you can kind of relate to things you've learned previously. Not so much in OB. It's hard to relate it back to other things you've previously learned because it is so specific. Another one, a big one, is you don't care about OB because you're never going to be an OB nurse. So, you know what I mean? I do have that. Most of my students are not going to be OB nurses. I know that. I don't pretend to think that they're all going to go and say, I want to deliver babies and I want to take care of moms. And No, I know better. I know that maybe like one or two of you are interested in that. Most of you aren't. So having that like lack of, you know, desire to learn the information because I'm never going to use it does impact you. It does impact you and it impacts your grades and your motivation to study and all of that. So a big thing in this class is people don't care because they don't think they need to know this information because it doesn't apply to them. In some schools, your OB rotation may be shorter. So if you have a 14 weeks term normally, like your med surge class will be 14 weeks, some schools will have it broken up for your OB and PEDS will be seven weeks OB, seven PEDS. So again, you're learning a new language in seven weeks. That's not a long time. And then finally, the other reason why it's hard is the pharmacology. So there's lots of new medications that you will learn about that you didn't learn about in pharm. Most pharmacology teachers don't focus much on OB. I know they do teach some, but you're basically taking a new pharmacology course with OB meds. So that can be a little bit scary. It can be a little bit challenging. The key topics we talk about in OB, it's literally everything. On the first day of my class, I walk in and I say, all right guys, let's learn where babies come from. Cause that's what we do. We start with conception and then we go on to, you know, prenatal care, pregnancy, then labor and delivery, then postpartum, then newborn, then complications for the newborn. I try to do it in that order cause I think that's an easier way to learn it. So things you will expect to learn, the reproductive system, hopefully this is one you do have some sort of prior knowledge about from like your A&P class or maybe even a med surge class. Hormones, pregnant women are hormonal, that is a thing and they do impact everything. Every part of your body when you are pregnant is impacted by hormones. Normal lab values because they are different for a pregnant woman than a non-pregnant woman. The placenta, the function of the placenta, what does it do, what does it look like? The amniotic fluid, again, its function, what does it do, its structure? All of the different prenatal testing, the nurse's role in everything. So from preconception counseling to delivery to postpartum to taking care of your baby. So what does the nurse do in all of this? The stages of labor complications for mom and complications for baby, either you know, pregnancy complications like a placenta previa or labor and delivery complications like a hemorrhage or complications for baby like a shoulder dystocia, all of these things, all these complications. Head to toe assessment on a postpartum woman and on a newborn. Fetal development, reading a fetal heart rate monitor, and then again, all of those medications. In my class, what I usually do is on the first day, I give them a medication list of like what I consider the top 35 most important medications for this area, from pregnancy to postpartum, for babies, all of that kind of stuff. 
And so what I've decided to do is I'm going to make an individual video about each one of those medications and I will be posting them throughout the semester here so you guys can learn them too. So this is the key stuff we talk about in OB. Now let's talk about the best way for you to study for this class. So what's the best way to study for this class? First of all, you need to know your terms. You need to know this terminology because if you don't get that, you're not going to understand anything. So however the best way you learn terms, like making flashcards or something, do that. You need to get that stuff down. You want to review the information the same day that you learn it. So come to class, take good notes, pay attention, and then review that information that same day. Don't just shove it in your backpack and forget about it for a week. You will remember it better the sooner you review it. You want to read the book, of course, but you want to do it before class and come to class with questions. This is a class where I fully expect, you know, a good 10 minute of questions from my students before I even start lecture. I read this and I didn't understand this. Or, this happened to my cousin when she had a baby, but the book says this, what does that mean? You know, things like that, I fully expect those and your teacher probably will too. So, read the book, take good notes, and then write questions about things you don't understand. Make charts. So, in OB, there's a lot of things that could be put in a chart. So we have the four stages and phases of labor, right? So that can be written out in a chart form. You could talk about, you know, there's certain risk factors for the abrupto placenta versus the placenta previa, things like that. So this is a really good class when it comes to making charts and like comparing things. And then finally, I want to say, you got to put in the effort. I know this might not be your cup of tea, this might not be something you're passionate about, and that's fine, but you can't blow it off. You do have to try. You do have to put in the same amount of effort for OB that you would put in a med surge course. It is still important. It will still be on ATI. It will still be on the NCLEX. Even if you never set foot in a labor and delivery department in your entire life as a nurse, you still need to know these things because you still will be tested on them. And then the final thing, I didn't put it on here, is you should be proud of yourself. You know, in most schools, this is one of the last courses you will take before graduation, which means you've made it this far. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Getting to the OB class is a pretty big accomplishment. And if you can do that, you can pass this class, right? You passed farm to get here. You passed med surge to get here. You can pass this class. You just have to put in the effort and try your best. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.